Do you struggle with money? Are you ready to transform your entire life? At last, it's time to explore how you can create your spiritual money right now. Now you might be familiar with this material, but for those who aren't, allow me a moment to introduce you to two men and their legendary book, Napoleon Hill, Andrew Carnegie, and the book, Think and Grow Rich. This book is truly the ultimate spiritual success manual, having sold over a hundred million copies and helped to create more millionaires in the world than you can count. This book came about in 1937, when a man named Andrew Carnegie commissioned a young Napoleon Hill to write a book about how he became the wealthiest person of his generation, the world's first billionaire by today's standards. I mean, technically he wasn't a billionaire, but with the inflation of the dollar, today he would be several times over. Now, just to get this out of the way, I feel it's important to note that for those who read it, you'll probably notice a bit of a sexual bias in the language used. The book was clearly intended written for men when it was published in 1937. That said, the principles they explore are relative for anyone who is on the journey of wealth transformation. And while I don't support the sexist attitude, the core information is valuable to explore. This book documents the ultimate success philosophy and formula for anyone who is seeking to generate wealth in a way of thinking that mirrors the understanding of the ancient Greek mystery schools. I'm not even joking. This book literally teaches how to create wealth in your life by being psychic. Allow me a moment to share a few key passages to show you what I'm referring to. Truly, thoughts are things and powerful things at that when they are mixed with definiteness of purpose, persistence, and a burning desire for their translation into riches or other material objects. More than 40 years ago, the author working in conjunction with the late Dr. Alexander Graham Bell and Dr. Elmer R. Gates observed that every human brain is both a broadcasting and receiving station for the vibration of thought. In a fashion similar to that employed by the radio broadcasting principle, every human brain is capable of picking up vibrations of thought, which are being released by other brains. Yes, all of this was written in 1937. Now, when you begin to think and grow rich, you will observe that riches begin with a state of mind, with definiteness of purpose. The author reminds us that our state of mind is of the utmost importance. Success comes to those who become success conscious. Failure comes to those who indifferently allow themselves to become failure conscious. He concludes the introductory chapter by informing us that if we can learn to follow the 13 principles of thinking and growing rich, literally anyone can lead a wealthy and prosperous life. Going over the principles take up the majority of this book, but allow me a moment to run through them with you. Principle one is desire. We must have a healthy desire for what it is that we want. This is akin to being able to consciously focus on what you're wanting to create for what we think and feel actively creates our reality. If we choose to just get what life gives us, then certainly we're not going to end up with much. We have to be clear about what we want and be willing to go after it. Principle two is faith. Quoting directly from the book, faith is the head chemist of the mind. When faith is blended with thought, the subconscious mind instantly picks up the vibration, translates it into its spiritual equivalent, and then transmits it into infinite intelligence, as in the case of prayer. Infinite intelligence is often used to describe God or spirit. Principle three is autosuggestion, a term which essentially means self-suggestion, the agency of communication between the conscious and subconscious minds. This is your ability to program your own subconscious mind by making sure to feed it creative and healthy thoughts instead of destructive ones. Principle four is specialized knowledge. There are two kinds of knowledge, general and specialized. General knowledge is the kind of stuff you learn in school, random bits of history and math and literature and stuff that by itself isn't really good for much. Specialized knowledge, on the other hand, is knowledge that is organized and intelligently directed towards the fulfillment of your dreams. Principle five is imagination. What they describe to be the workshop wherein all dreams and desires are given shape, form, and action. There are two forms of our imagination, the synthetic imagination, which arranges old concepts, ideas, or plans into new combinations, which doesn't create anything new, and the creative imagination, 
which is the mind-opening bridge to infinite intelligence, which allows you to conceive of entirely new concepts, the faculty through which hunches and inspirations are achieved. Principles six, seven, and eight all go together. They are organized planning, decision, and persistence. This is the practical ability to form definite, practical plans of action, making decisions on them, and executing them consistently and persistently until you begin to see results. Procrastination is the killer of dreams. So while you might be worried that, oh, I mean, what if I don't make the right decision? Any decision is better than sitting there and doing nothing. And you always continually refine and improve as you go. Speaking to persistence, Napoleon Hill explains that one of the most common causes of failure is the habit of quitting when one is overtaken by temporary defeat. Every person is guilty of this mistake at one time or another. When defeat overtakes a person, the easiest and most logical thing to do is quit, and that's what so many do. However, failure is a trickster with a keen sense of irony and cunning. It takes great delight in tripping one when success is almost within reach. Principle nine is the power of the master mind. The master mind may be defined as coordination of knowledge and effort in a spirit of harmony between two or more people for the attainment of a definite purpose. It basically means don't try and do everything yourself. If you can team up with people to achieve a vision, do it. Principle 10 is the mystery of sex transmutation. Yes, the mystery of sex transmutation. Very simply, it means the switching of the mind from thoughts of a physical expression into thoughts of some other nature. I'll just leave that one here, but it's a very interesting chapter. Principle 11, 12, and 13 are called the subconscious mind, the brain, and the sixth sense. And it's when this book really becomes a mystery school of its own. They explain that our minds are receivers and emitters for thoughts and emotions into the collective field of consciousness, that we're connected to everyone, that we must train and use our subconscious for connecting to infinite intelligence, AKA source, spirit, or God. And through opening to infinite abundance, we begin to direct ourselves toward the creation of value in the world, which produces wealth as a result. We also develop the faculties of our psychic mind, the sixth sense through which infinite intelligence may and will communicate voluntarily without any effort from you. This is the apex of the philosophy but which can only be truly mastered once the other principles have fully been understood and integrated into the psyche. The book concludes with a final chapter on the six ghosts of fear, where they describe that the sixth sense will be blocked as long as you embody the following fears. The fear of poverty, criticism, ill health, loss of love of someone, old age, and death. We must tackle these fears and overcome them within us through meditation and other conscious engagement with ourselves and this will support us in activating our own sixth sense. Now, I know these 13 principles alone are a lot to digest, so you might need to rewatch this video and take notes. But that said, there's one more thing from this book I must share with you. Think and Grow Rich also describes the six step action item formula to begin creating your spiritual wealth right now. Take note, if you want to completely transform your financial reality, I encourage you to pay close attention to the following. Step one, determine what you want to achieve or accomplish. Decide what your goal is. Your goal must be specific enough that you know when you have achieved it. It is also important that you are emotionally engaged in achieving the goal. Your desire for the end result must be strong enough to motivate you to do what you need to do even when you don't want to do it. Step two, Decide what you are willing or need to give in return for what you desire. Nothing worthwhile comes without a price. For example, time, money, a change of habit, etc. What changes do you need to make to your life or lifestyle that will allow you to achieve your goal? Step three, set a specific date when you want to achieve your goal by. This gives you a set timeline to work with as you develop your plan. Step four, develop your plan. Begin at once, whether you are ready or not. What steps are you planning to take that move you toward your goal? Do not wait for the plan to be perfect. Start right away. You can and will make adjustments as you go. Step five, write a clear and concise statement of what you want, when you want it, what you are willing to give, 
and the steps you plan to take to achieve the goal. Step six, read your statement out loud with emotion a minimum of two times a day, first thing in the morning and right before you go to sleep. This is the most important step in the process. And adding to this, visualize yourself as if you've already achieved your goal. Do this as often as you can during the day, even if only for a few moments. And that's it. With that, I now must bring this episode to a close, but fear not, our journey into spiritual money is not over yet. There are still some very important things we have to explore. See you next week.